Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today's pen is the Moonman M600S in a gorgeous new finish, Amber. I love Amber. But before I introduce the pen a little more, I know some of you like my guitar introductions. I know others skip town the moment they see a guitar and not a pen. That's fine. I love both. I've noticed that other fountain pen reviewers enjoy guitars as well with Peter Draws composing a little ditty waxing poetic about another fountain pen video. And just the other day, David Parker of Fig Boot on Pens demonstrated he is starting to learn the guitar. This is fantastic. He even played a couple of chords and will be documenting his progress. Good on you, David. Hang in there and play through the pain. I thought I'd do a short guitar lesson to give David a cool guitar riff to practice. That is, if he's watching, of course. He's not watching. Every beginner should learn this riff and play it long and loud in their local guitar shop. <laughs> Of course, that is Slow Walkin' Walter by Deep Fuchsia. And this is how you play it. So this is the way you play Slow Walkin' Walter by Deep Fuchsia. You're only going to play with two strings, and that's your center two strings, the D and the G string. Sort of the strings between the name Doug, without the OO. So you're going to play those two strings open, and then press those two strings down at the third fret, same two strings and then move it all up to the 5th fret, then open, 3rd, do a little slide from 6 to 5, so it's open, 3rd, 5th, open, 3rd, 6th, 5th. Now you don't have to play it with those two fingers, you can play with one finger. And if we focus on my fretting hand, I'm playing just the two center strings, and I'm only playing with these two fingers. This is what these guitar fingernails are for. Again, and thanks for staying with me through the lesson on Slow Walk and Walter, the fire engine guy. Today's review is about the Moonman M600S in amber. Now, I've owned two other Moonman 600S pens, one in a sky blue, which I gave to my son, and one in this gorgeous teal color. I also have the brown checkerboard M600 without the S, which means it came with a Schmidt nib. Unfortunately, the Schmidt was more schmuck than smooth. So I replaced it, as I did with two other M600s with a pen BBS fine Waverly nib. When Moonman came out with this amber version, I'm such a sucker for amber with all my amber pens. The Moonman M800 and the pen BBS 323, 308, 480, 355, which is coming, and 500, as well as a Picasso 975 that I gifted. I just had to have this M600S, at least to compare. 
Plus, I have another Pen VBS Fine Waverly nib ready to swap if the Moonman nib turns out to be typically boring Moonman nib. But don't let me give away the punchline. Let's unbox this new amber gem and take a good look at it right now. Now let's look at the next package. Another little bundle of bubble, and here we are. This is an M600 in a new finish, amber. This is an M600S, and it feels and looks exactly like the others. Moonman 6 nib, but we will clean this one out and ink it up and do a review and a writing review. So here we are with the Moonman M600S in amber. As you saw in the unboxing, I received this pen the same day as the Moonman T2, which I reviewed last Wednesday. You can see that review right here. I also reviewed this model Moonman before, and I'll add the links to the two M600S reviews, as well as the M600 with the Schmidt nib. I won't go into too much depth in this review, as I've already done two of them, but I'll give some size comparisons, measurements, and show the parts and features, and then do a writing sample. And stay tuned after the writing sample, where I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. This M600S has not changed at all from the others. The only difference is the resin. So let's take a good look at this resin right now. It is really very, very nice. I'm sure this is the same resin that is on my M800 and all of my Pen BBS models called Amber is a Cat. I have another Amber is a Cat Pen BBS on the way, still stuck in China from an order at the end of April. Still waiting. And looking at the M800 and the M600S side by each here, I have to say that the acrylic looks much better on the M800. Uh, not so much because of the resin, but because of the juxtaposition. You like that word, kitties? That's the word of the day. And if any of them say the secret word, they'd win an extra hundred bucks. This is the word right here. Well, now, suppose you became a famous actress, and then you met somebody you liked and got married. Would you be willing to quit acting and be a housewife and a mother? Well, I think if you keep your feet on the ground, you can combine both. That's what I would like to do. Well, if you keep your feet on the ground, you'll never be a mother. <laughs> because of the juxtaposition of the black finials on both ends of the M600S, and especially on the section. I think uh, with the M800 being all that resin, and with just the gold accents, makes it much more attractive in my mind. But there are, on the M800, some really nice tiger swirls on this side. Of course, your mileage may vary as always because it's the luck of the draw with the resin. There are nice chatoyant areas, transparent areas you can see through. And there are some of those tiger stripe swirls. Really, really lovely. This of course is a steel, not a copy, not a fake, not a ripoff. See my video on the T2 for more ranting on this subject. But this is a steal of the legendary Parker Duofold. Duofold came around in the 1920s. Moonman isn't the only pen maker that steals this design, as we see on this Kaigulu 316, also in a ambery kind of a finish with really nice chatoyancy. And the Jinhao Centennial. The Centennial has just come out with some more finishes other than this big red uh, 
It's not red at all, it's orange, but it's from the big red duofold. Nor are the Chinese the only pen makers to steal this design, as here is a Conklin Durograph. Look like anything to you? Similar? Bueller? Bueller? Anyone? Bueller? 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 And there are many others from many different makers. Here are some. The Conklin Endura. The Waterman 32. 52. 92. The Schaefer No Nonsense. The Schaefer Flat Top. Moore. Conway Stewart Duro. Clever use of the R there. A Swan. And a the DeLaRue Vintage 1930s pen. So that 1930s DeLaRue was copying Parker right out of the gate. Didn't see much gnashing of teeth about copying the Parker design through the last hundred years or so. So many American and British companies ripping off Parker's original design. I will leave a strongly worded review for Waterman on Yelp, letting them know that copying is not ethical. You keep in mind that my sharply worded comments on Yelp.com recently took down a local muffin store. <laughs> of course, I'll wait until they send my gorgeous Waterman Karen back first. No sense poking the bear, huh? You know, it tastes kind of different than usual. <laughs> oh my God, there's a bear in my oatmeal! <laughs> At least Conway Stewart, isn't he a captain of the Enterprise? At least Conway Stewart had the decency to disguise Duofold as Jira. Oh wait, perhaps they were copying Conklin's Jurograph. And wait, isn't Jurograph just a disguise of Duofold? Inquiring minds want to know. My head will explode with all of this controversy about pens. Now that I'm sufficiently inured, ooh, the second secret word of the day. Now that I'm sufficiently inured to the fact that all pen companies copy from each other since the dawn of the quill, let's take a look at my duofold clones, shall we? So let's send in the clones. Send in the clones. I have, in no order of importance, the aforementioned Conklin Durograph. This is in a, a black limited edition model from Goulet Pens. And I've replaced the black nib that was on it with a Natami rose gold nib. A Kaigaloo 316. I have three of these, in fact. Beautiful pens. Lovely nibs with a kangaroo and a pouch. Has that little baby Joey in the pouch. The Jinhao Centennial. No bones about it. They called it the Centennial because it copies, sorry, steals from the Parker Duofold Centennial, which was a copy of their original Duofold. A fake Jinhao Centennial made by POS Pens. POS stands for This Pen Sucks. In Chinese, it makes sense. Horrible pen. You can see the review of this POS pen right here. And a Moonman M600. This is the M600 that came with a Schmidt nib. Doesn't have the Schmidt nib on it anymore. But it's in this wonderful checkerboard, brown checkerboard pattern. And here's my other M600S, which came with a Moonman nib, which is now gone as well, in this lovely teal color. The difference between the Moonman M600 and the M600S is that the Moonman 600S has an S on it, and the Moonman M600 does not. Plus the S, which stands for cheaper version, it makes sense in Chinese. 
comes with a Moonman nib. Oops. Comes with a Moonman nib. And the M600 comes with a Schmidt nib. Oops. Let's see, where did I put that Schmidt nib? It's in here somewhere. Um, is that it? No, it's a Jin Hao. Is that it? No, oh, that's a fully win. There it is. Found it. You can stop searching. I found it. So it came with this Schmidt Phi nib in it. You'd think that the M600S would be the one with the Schmidt nib in it. Or it should be the M600 NS. No Schmidt. Then you'd know for sure. Hey, this cheaper model doesn't have a German nib. No Schmidt. It's cheap. This Jinhao clone is a real thigh slapper. What a piece of Schmidt. It was actually advertised on eBay as a Jinhao. Now I know that Jinhao makes some inexpensive pens. Good ones like the X450, the X750, and the 159. But this monstrosity is insulting to even Jinhao. It would be cool to see Jinhao sue another Chinese pen company for copying their copy of the Parker Duofold. However, the Jinhao Centennial is a very nice Duofold clone. I don't have a Duofold to compare it to, but that orange is really bright. I'm not sure that the original Big Red is that bright. There are other colors available, and the nib is a typical Jinhao smooth nail. Very easy to exchange nibs on this with most standard size number six nibs. As Jin Hao's go, this is relatively expensive, uh, but I think it's worth the extra few bucks over an X450 or an X750. The Kaigaloo 316 is a heavy pen, but it was the first duo fold clone I bought. I bought three of them. The acrylics are really nice. And they are really my favorite dual-fold clone until the M600 came along. Here are the other two. This is in a dark purple-blue swirl kind of thing. It's really quite lovely. And this one, it looks very similar to the finish on a um, Parker dual-fold Centennial. This white, chatoyant white with these black swirls. It's quite gorgeous. But as I said, very heavy pens. Relatively. Do you know the story of the M600? When it arrived on eBay and Etsy, they were very popular and expensive. I mean, for a Chinese pen. With the Schmidt nib, this pen came in around 50 bucks US. I bit the bullet and got this brown checkerboard pattern. I hated the Schmidt nib right out of the packet. It was a piece of Schmidt. And I replaced it almost immediately. It now sports a Shui Yao Mini Fude or Waverly style fine nib. Shui Yao, there it is. Shui Yao is a Pen BBS clone company. Don't get me started on the Chinese Clone Wars. It gives Biney a headache. Shortly after the M600 appeared and sold out, they came out with the M600S, sans Schmidt. The M600S came with a Moonman fine nib. This is my teal version. It's very beautiful. The Moonman nib was yanked almost immediately and now sports a Shui Yao nib as well. Now, we finally circle back to the new amber version of the M600S with a Holy cow, what kind of nib is that? I said it before and I'll say it again. Hi, caramba! It's a Bach nib. Even before I filmed the writing sample with this pen, I pulled the Moonman nib and replaced it with the Bach that came with my Moonman M800. Amber. This nib has really made the rounds. It came in the Amber M800 and I pulled it. It sat in the box for a while until I got my pen BBS 309. It lived in this pen for a while until I got my Memento Zero. The Bach nib fit it perfectly, allowing me to write with the pen until I performed surgery on the two defective nibs I got with this pen. Then I pulled the Bach and put it back 
in my M800 Amber. I still didn't like it, so I pulled it out and I put it in my new M600S Amber. And it works really nicely, as we shall see. Have you lost count? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, five nib swaps. Oh wait, I forgot. I had it in my Moonman T2 as well. Six swaps. We will forgo the size comparison lineup since I've had the pen next to so many other pens already. But I'll put up some measurements right now and then come back with a writing sample and then give you my thoughts on this pen and other things. <laughs> Okay, we are back with the writing sample portion of the review. And this is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Moon Man. M600S. And it has a Bach. fine nib. Of course, it's steel. If you're interested in how the Moonman steel nib writes, I have a playlist of all of my Moonman fountain pen reviews that I will link right here and in the description below. They mostly write the same. I call the T2 nib boring or meh. They're usually on the wet side and about 50% of the time they require a little micro mesh polishing and a tine tweak here and there. And the ink today is a new ink that I just picked up, Monteverde. This color is Canyon Rust. I got it at my pen store just the other day as a possible ink for my Waterman Caren when it arrives back from France. Monteverde. Canyon Rust. And here's the test card for it. And when you put it on thick, I tried to thin this out a little bit in the sample, but it, it came out very, very thick and it turns almost black. There's some shading here. But when you write with it, it's actually a lot more brown and has some good shading to it. As I think you'll see, here it is with Robert Oster, Aster Kiza Rot, and with Dimene Ancient Copper. All three of these inks are in the running for going into my Waterman Karen. You can probably tell I'm excited about getting that pen back. Let's check the wetness. This is a very wet nib. I love it. As to line variation, there is no pressure. There's pushing it a bit. Of course, it gets a lot wetter, but again, it's very stiff. It's not as stiff as a Pen BBS steel nib, but um, you're not going to get any line variation out of it. And to our writing sample. and some reverse writing. Wow, that's very scratchy, very dry. And some quick writing. You can see it's keeping up very, very nicely. I think I finally found a pen for this Bach nib that has made the rounds in six different pens, or six different swaps at least, five different pens. Very, very nice. It makes me want to write with this pen. 
So what do I like about this fountain pen, and what do I not like so much? Well, this is the fourth pen in this model that I've bought, so that should tell you something right off the bat. I have no imagination, or I'm in a rut. Well, it's neither, I'm afraid. I've never held a real duofold, but I like everything about the model, or should I say, the refinement of the model. The Duofold Centennial was a reissue by Parker back in the late 90s for their 100th anniversary. They made some changes to it to make it a modern fountain pen. It's a cartridge converter pen. And they made some changes to the section, which make it look more like that. Those changes are reflected in this pen, the shape of the section, and, of course, this being a cartridge converter. I should show it since I didn't show it earlier. There is the cartridge converter, and the section is branded Moonman, all pretty standard. I'm not going to criticize the design of this pen because it resembles the Duofold Centennial so closely, and this design has inspired so many fountain pens over the decades. It is obviously a successful and popular design. I like it. The better question would be, what do I like about the Moonman version of the Duofold in comparison to these others? Well, I like that the nibs are so easily swappable. The Jinhao is very swappable, like the Moonman, but the Kaigaloos are not. Because the standard Moonman fine nib doesn't impress me much. Okay, so you're Brad Pitt. That don't impress me much. Did you know that Shania Twain has kids named Mark and Choo Choo? It's a fact. You're one of the most boring, tedious, uninteresting, monotonous, flatulent, flattered, cloth-eared, swivel-eyed, fornicating little gits I ever nailed on. Is that a fact? I also like the M600 because the acrylics from this checkerboard pattern to the blue sky and the teal version and this beautiful amber are so gorgeous. The Kaigaloos and the Jin Haos are just not as nice, in my opinion, as the Moon Man's. The Conklin Durograph comes in some interesting acrylics, but they are overpriced and the nibs are sketchy. There are only a couple of things that I would comment are negative. The almost three turns, one, two, three, to get the cap off is a bit much. And the relative unpostability of the pen. It makes it hugely long and way back weighted. It makes it too unwieldy to write with. This is actually unfair about the lack of posting because the original design posts about the same. And this pen is beautifully balanced in the hand, unposted. So there you have it. The Moonman M600S in amber. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.